Hi there, and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter, and I live on that wooden cruiser right there in Victoria, British Columbia, all the while restoring it, and that's a bit of a project. Anyway, if you're interested in that sort of thing, please consider subscribing. Now, I have to start this episode with a bit of an apology. I am in the middle of an engine uh, repower on both boats, and I had mentioned to some people who'd asked in comments that this episode would talk about the engineering, the sizing, and the justification for which engines I was going to use. I didn't get around to doing that, so uh, we'll have to put that off to next week. So here's Jordy on the beach in uh, Tofino on the west coast of Vancouver Island in the summer of 2018. Gosh, he's going to be 14 years old next spring and some days he just seems to act like a puppy. Just love our boy. Uh, good time to remind everyone that I give away a Jordy t-shirt with every episode. So if you like one, just leave a comment below and I'll uh, pick one at random from the first 24 hours worth of comments. Cheers. All right, day two of the uh, engine dismantle. Uh, life goes on. It's getting a little hard to cook in the galley here with this here. Gorgeous day here. Absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to it. Okay, see ya. Well, there we go. Built a heavy duty dolly for uh, hauling the old engines out and uh, the new engines in. Hey pup, what do you think? I must say, uh, once you rip your wheelhouse apart, it makes living on the boat a little more difficult. Puppy's been pretty tolerant, haven't you? You miss your nice wheelhouse, don't you? Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, so here's the mess. Um, I didn't get much footage shot yesterday because the GoPro battery died, as it tends to. Anyway, Got the transmission, bell housing, flywheel, all that stuff off the back. Again, these flywheels are insanely heavy. I didn't shoot any footage of taking apart the 4236, which is basically stripped to the same point. Well, rocker cover's still on. Um, it's stripped to the point where it's light, but still a complete engine, whereas this one I'm stripping to be able to dismantle it um, to make every part as light as possible. I'm just at the point where I'm gonna take the head off. Um, of course, the engine lifts are on the head, and I still have some tension on this. So I gotta make sure that the engine doesn't tip and fall over and you know punch a Perkins sized hole in the bottom of the boat. So I have a solution for that. And uh, so the head is the first heavy thing to get out of here. And I gotta take it out on the dolly. It's gonna go out the window, created a little sliding platform for it here that I can put it on and then collect it outside. We'll see how this all goes. I'm making this up as I go along, can you tell? Anyway, uh, I have a couple of other tubs. I start, gotta start putting parts in, get them all into my truck and then take all the steel to the scrap place. Um, you have to have a minimum amount. Well, they give you three cents a pound. I'll be happy to just get rid of it. But Well, I'm just at the point where I'm pulling off the injection pump. I have saved the injectors. You might have seen them down at the other end. I won't take you on too much of a tour because I believe they're the same injectors in the 4236. So having six spare injectors that I could have rebuilt and then keep with me would be really awesome. Anyway, time to keep wrenching. Time to get dirty. Hang in there. Well, the injection pump is off. Just about everything heavy. I gotta do the front case, but I think I'll do that after I flip it over. There's a little, how much lift on there now. I have no idea what this is gonna weigh. I'm gonna guess 100 pounds. Is that something I can move? I don't know. I'm gonna find out, aren't we? There we go. This is not terribly sympathetic to the engine, I know, but it's going straight in the scrap heap. Well, I don't know, somewhere between two minutes and two days. You sure? Oh yeah. Okay. There we go. Not bad. Maybe a hundred pounds. Maybe less. Anyway, uh, as you may have heard, I have a neighbor that just came to the window and said he'd help me haul it out, which is great. I neglected to catch that on video. Um, we slid it out the window. I can't guess what it weighs. Maybe, maybe 100 pounds. Wasn't that bad. Wasn't that bad. Okay, so now I gotta pick this up in a way that it'll gently tip back over on its side. And um, without it doing some horrible flip in the air. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to think about that a little bit, and there's no sense you watching me think. Okay, this should work. So, 
I have the rear come along under a washer under a head bolt, the front come along under the engine mount. So obviously if I lifted it now, it would really tip over rather violently. Uh, it's hard to say, it would probably settle out, but I want some more control. So I put two bridle lines on the motor mount on the other side. The nice thing about those is once I've got some lift on it, I can let these go a little bit and slowly let it lean over. I'm not even sure it will tip enough with this will be fine. This would, if, if both hoists were this far over, it'd be great, but I'm sort of compromising. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. A little bit there, a little bit here. There goes my support block. So it's certainly tipping it over. I'm hoping it'll lift it off the platform in a second and my bridles will do their job. Perfect, I like that. Oh, I like it. Excellent. See, now I can let the bridles go a bit. It's amazing how much lighter it is already. Buddy, planes! Okay, now the bridles are working pretty hard, so I'm gonna let a little bit of this out. Whoa, there we go. There we go. This is the second time I've had an oil pan go bad on this engine and I finally figured out what was going wrong. Well, I actually knew before and didn't cope with it properly. Uh, electrolytic corrosion. Um, there's really bad power at this marina and the ground is live. I knew that and I went to some trouble to sort that out but I didn't separate the engine in time and it burned through this oil pan too. It's amazing how quickly you can electroplate aluminum right off. And even though I put on this super paint POR15 and the, you people in the auto restoring world will know this stuff. Pfft, no match. No match. Anyway, let's find a clean finger and turn this off and get figured out what I'm doing next. The Perkins 4236 is the perfect engine for this boat. But at the same time, it's also absolutely the worst engine for this boat because it's so bloody tall. Um, the neat thing about these monks is that the wheelhouse is very low. It means I can reach out the wheelhouse window and grab the dock, put, li put lines on the dock from the helm. A lot of it is really great that it's so low, except there's very little room in the engine room. Okay, let's get this other thing off of here. There we go. One useless oil pan. One useless $1,100 oil pan. Well, what do you think? Huh. It's not very likely that this is going to do this. I'm going to fix something in the engine here to keep it from... There we go. Well, is it even a left-hand thread? That is one hell of a nut, and I'm not grinding it off. Did I say nut? Of course I meant bolt. Bolt. Well, I've abandoned trying to take the crank out. But I can at least um, take all the pistons and connecting rods out. I just took the first one out here, or number six, or whatever it is, and it wasn't wasn't that hard to get out. Um, it's not all that heavy, so I mean it's not really an amazing saving, but I don't know. Feels a little better to at least take something else off it. I'll take the main caps off. I'll take uh, that's about it. I'm gonna get this oil pump off of here, which is a bit of a drag because the gear drive is kind of complicated. Anyway, okay, so uh, I'll just keep at this for a bit, figure out how to get this oil pump off of here. And uh, there we go, there's a pound. <laughs> See what these bush bearings look like. Oh, that's pretty scored. Wow. Really. I mean, not that I'm an expert, but I have rebuilt a few engines and I would say that's pretty scored. Anyway, ran pretty good. Crikey, need a clean finger. Ah, well, there's a few pounds. Let's do a few more. What the heck, I'll take the mains off too. Save another 10 pounds. Oh yeah. Holy mackerel! Oh, this thing will be light as a feather. Okay. 
position on it. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, before I lift any further, I want to get the bridge set up so it's right outside the window here and I can slide it in and place it in place right away. Okay, so that's the first of three bridges. This one will go inside, and um, I'll build another one identical that'll be outside. And then there's a small transverse one that has to be pivoted to be able to deal with the dock moving down and the boat moving down. This dock is quite solid, so it's probably okay, but the boat is gonna move quite a bit once the engine comes to the edge of it. Anyway, I'm gonna slide this one in. Okay, I don't know if it's in your field of view, but the bridge is stuck in the window a bit. Um, let's just see if I can get this high enough into the air. Oh, it's going to be close. Really close. Alright, well I neglected to uh, shoot much footage while I got it on here. It's basically just a little pull here, a little pull there, two come alongs back and forth. I got it balanced. It's now sitting on uh, its own members on the bridge. Um, I'm going to put some little guides on the side of the bridge so as I slide it along it won't fall off the bridge. Uh, but now I have to slide it up far enough that I can put the come along at the back and lift the bridge up. <laughs> yeah, anyway let me get geared up for that. I'll try to show it to you this time. Okay, well I didn't shoot much of that because uh, I had some help and we were just sort of making it up as we were going along. But we've got the engine up on skids on the bridge uh, strap down, got a safety on the back which is going to be what's going to lift the bridge. We dragged it up with this come along. It's far enough up now that I can lift the bridge up, put the support under the bridge, and maybe call it a day. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, let's see how this goes. Anything terrible happening? Nope. Nope. Perfect. I don't like terrible things happening. Okay, so here we go. Rig is all built. The A-frames, the bridge, the cross bridge, which is on, it's on pivots here, so the boat can move. Uh, we have, should have enough clearance. The rails have all been waxed. I have a lot of help here from my neighbors today, which is making this all happen smoothly. Are we all ready in there? I know, I know, but I'm having to go over a little bit. There we go. You know, it's funny, the wax is working so well. Yeah, yeah no, we, we I don't know. I could probably do this without the. Uh, one more. Right there is all we need. Hang on, I'll get you one. Oh, you might have to go back a bit. Let's see if I can get another. You're gonna run out of there we go. lift. You're, you're maxed out on your pulley. On yep. your and we can just do it. There we go. That way, I think. Good. Another part I really hate. This is better. Careful. Your pincher, if there ever was one. Yeah. Careful. Well done everybody!
All right. Sorry folks, gotta move you a lot. You'll be okay there for a minute, right? Okay. What are you doing there, Cam? Yep, got Got it. that camera. We got it. I don't think we'll get to the camera. Oh, we might. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alright, well that's enough of that. Pretty good, eh?